Hey, 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 hey. Oh, Mr. Ward here. How are you guys doing out there in... In Cyberland. Lesson 5.4. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. And what's our topic today, Mr. Warren? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Our topic is division of decimals by whole numbers. Ooh, I like the ring of that. Doesn't that just ring, ring? <laughs> anyway, what's our essential question? Well, it's how can you divide decimals by whole numbers? Okay, like the topic, basically. Yes, Mr. Warren. Woohoo! But you know, we can't do any of that. We can't focus on our essential question. We can't unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. We're talking real world, baby. Real world problems here. Let's do it. Yeah. It says in a swimming relay, each swimmer swims in equal part of the total distance. Brianna and three other swimmers won a relay in five and sixty-eight hundredths minutes. What is the average time each relay team member swam? Ooh, yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm liking this. Well, I need to understand and maybe unpack the problem, take it apart. Slow it down in slow motion, my friend. So, if it's equal, part of the total distance, eh, division should be coming to mind. But it does say Brianna and three other swimmers won it in this amount of time. So it's almost like we're taking that time. If we're trying to find the average time each relay team member swam, each member of that team, then that average, we're going to take that 5 and 6,800 and divide that by the number of swimmers. In this case, this is how many swimmers are part of that relay team. Well, you know what? It'd be easy to just write down three. I have fallen into this trap many a time, my friends. But no, Brianna is also on that team. So three plus one is four. So I'm putting four. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it says one way. Use place value. Okay, let's follow these steps. We have our models on the left-hand side. And it looks like that we have step one. Step one, and it says think and record. Okay, share the ones. Okay, we can do this because we have five and sixty-eight hundreds. The five, yeah, we can we can put one in each one of those groups, the four groups of the members. And and we multiply that four times one, we get four. And I see that four right there. In blue. On blue. <laughs> okay, and then five minus four is check. Okay. Now it says Blank ones cannot be shared among four groups without regrouping. And that is, that's that one one that we had left. And if you look at our model here on the left-hand side, cameraman, thank you. A little close-in look. You can see that one was shared with each one of the groups. Step two, share the tenths. Okay, we have, it looks like six tenths there. That's kind of nice. We can share those. First, I have to rewrite my one, and then it's showing me to bring down my six. Okay, yeah, because we had that one hole left over, and now we're going to drop down six tenths. So in one way, you could say that I actually have 16 tenths. Ah, divide. 16 tenths divided by four. Well, four times four, four times four tenths. Okay, that's what that's equal to. And then that's going to come up here because four times four tenths is going to equal 16. Of course, we have none left over. We did subtract. We subtracted 16 tenths by 16 tenths. Showing that here. Check. Zero tenths cannot be shared among four groups. Okay. Step three. Share the hundreds. Okay. We're having to write. So this was zero here. Thank you. I'm dropping down my hundreds, which is eight. Oh, I still need my four up here again. Okay. Now divide eight hundredths, okay, by four. Well, we can do that. Right. Two. Because four times two is eight, like so. And then we end up with zero. We're going to subtract. We're subtracting eight hundredths by eight hundredths. Again, zero hundredths left over. Can't be shared. Place a decimal point in the quotient to separate the ones and the tenths. So each girl swam an average of, yeah, that average would be about, one, ooh, did I, I did you know what? I never put my decimal up here. Did it tell us to put the decimal up there? It did not. <gasps> oh, no. Okay. Hey, we need to have that decimal there. Yeah, I was following all the steps here, unless it said to put it there, and I didn't read that part of the instruction. Now, because this is at the end, it says, place the decimal point in the quotient to separate the ones and the tenths. Okay, I tend to put it first. Here, it's suggesting to put it at the end here. I guess either way works. Yes. Okay. 
So we end up with one and 42 hundredths minutes. So just over a minute. Very cool. That was kind of a quick problem. Now let's go to the next page. Bing! Says we have another way. We can use an estimate. Divide as you would with whole numbers. Okay. Divide $40.89 divided by 47. So let's estimate the quotient. They say 4,000 hundredths. They change the divisor from 47 to 50. And okay, and then we get 80 hundredths or 80 cents. So let's look at that. So if we have 4,000 okay, hundredths divided by 50, and you see here in this case, it's just 40 divided by 5, which is 8. Okay, and I have one power of 10 here. So when I divide, I could just cross one of those powers of 10s off to make this problem a little easier to divide. And since I already divided the 40, I have one more power of 10 that I could put on here in the end. Okay, and I was able to do that because I just made the problem one tenth the value by dividing a power of 10 on each side. So I divided that and I get the 80 hundredths, which we know we just said was written just like that. Now it says divide the tenths. Okay, so I'm guessing we need to do the long division here. Okay, so in this case, so you know, 47 uh, cannot, or I should say 40 holes, you know, can't be, can't be divided equally uh, for 47. So here I'm just going to put a zero. Now I have 408, but well, definitely 47 will go into 408. So what you could do is you could just kind of look at the very, very first digit here and think of that as 40. But since this number is really almost 50, we can think of this as a five, and then five will go into 400, like what we just said, eight times. Okay, it's actually what we're doing here is we're just taking away that power of 10 to make the number a little bit easier to manage than trying to say 47 into this weird number like 408, we're just saying, Eh, 47 is about 50. 50 is going to go into 400, but or just 5 will go into 40 this many times. All right, so now I do have to do my work, though. So 47 times 8, you need to know what that is. And that, my friends, is 32. looks like 37, 376. So I'm going to put 376. Make sure I line that up nicely. 8 minus 6 is 2. I have to regroup here. Give them a 10. We end up with 32. Now I still have a 9 up here. So we need to bring that nine down, that nine right there. Sorry, my little arrow was looking kind of crooked. And so now um, that was 376, fairly too large. I mean, what, 40, uh, 47 times seven, nine, four, four, 28. That's going to be 32. And that works out perfectly, perfectly. So it's going to go in there seven times, 329 ends up with zero. Okay, and the reason why I chose seven, you may wonder how, is just because eight over here, okay, gave me 376, and that was too large for my remainder here. So I dropped down one, thinking it was pretty close, and sure enough, it worked out. It did. Uh, this is, I guess, the steps, right? Divide the hundreds when the remainder is zero, and there are no more digits in the divot, and the division is complete. Use your estimate to place a decimal point, place a zero to show there are no ones. All right, and... That's what we'll do. So this was money, so I need to write it as such. So the exact answer was 87 cents. Our estimate was about 80. So checking my work, thinking, yeah, this seems pretty reasonable. OK, now let's look at mathematical practice six. And these mathematical practices are important because they help us with the steps involved in the process with acquiring that deeper level math. Here it's about attend to precision. It says I can use precision when solving problems and communicating my ideas. And you can see that I can do it accurately, efficiently, you know, and I can be exact whether it's asking me to estimate or find an exact answer, which is what we just did in this particular problem. Okay, communicating that you can speak, read, write, and listen uh, mathematically. And of course, you know, using the correct math symbols, vocabulary, that kind of thing. Okay, thank you, mathematical practice six. Now back to the program. It says explain how you use the estimate to place the decimal point in the quotient. Well, we kind of briefly mentioned it. I think I already stated it, but since the estimate was 80 cents, uh, I know the decimal has to be placed to the left of the 8 in the quotient. Now it says try this. Divide. Use multiplication to check your work. All right, let's do it. Again, you may want to try this at home first, just like Sharon and show, and then that way you can see how you did. All right, well, I'm looking at this number here in straight algorithm. Let's me know the 23 can go into 79. Oh, I'd say it probably goes in there two times. It's 46, it's gonna go in there one more time. 23 times three, 23 times three, that works, 69. 
So I am going to say it's going to go into 79 three times. I'm going to put my decimal point up right now. And then that's going to be 69. I'm going to do my subtraction. I end up with 10. Okay, I need to bring down my 3. That's 103. Now will one more sneak in there? Probably, since I already know 69 is the product of 23 times 3. If I were to add one more, that's like times 4. That's 12, 8, 92. And I don't think you're going to get another one in there. Okay, so we'll say that that's 4 times and that's going to be 92. We'll subtract. We get 1. Regroup. And you can see here we get 1. End up with 11 left over. We do have one more digit there. We need to bring that last digit down right there. Now we have 115. Uh, I bet if I add another 23, we have 5. There you go. Okay. So that means 3, 4, 5. Went right in a row. Okay. So 5 times 23 is going to be 115, leaving us with no remainder. Now, since we can check our work, well, I can take my quotient now, which is 3 and 45 hundredths. I can multiply that back with the divisor and see if it gives me the dividend. In this case, I have 15. I carry the 1. That's 12. That's going to be 13. Carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. First, partial quotient. Now, I need placeholder. That's right. And then 5 times 2 is 10. Carry that 1 right here. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And then 3 times 2 is 6. Now I can add those partial products together and look at, I get 7,935. Ah, but we know that we have two decimal places in the factor. So we'll take those two decimal places and move it back into the product. And sure enough, 79 and 35 hundreds, we have ourselves a match. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, let's do the last section, share and show. You may again want to just do this on your math board first, then hit the video on play again and see if my answers match up with yours. It says write the quotient with the decimal point placed correctly. Okay, so we have here 4 and 92 hundredths divided by 2 equals 246. Well, then it just means I need to put that decimal right between the 2 and the 4. You could take this number then and multiply it by 2 and see that that would happen and it would. Here in this case we have 50 and 16 hundredths divided by 38 equals 132. Again two decimal points so it looks like we're going to need to move that over so that it's going to be 1 and 32 hundredths. And what I meant about checking is you could take that answer right and you could multiply it by 38. You see you're going to have two decimal points in there and assuming that they did everything else correctly which I'm sure they did. 8, 9, 10 and that's 6, 9, 3, 10, 4, 5. There you go. See, and we have those two decimal places. So there we go. That would make sense. And it's 1 and 32 hundreds. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Another math video just comes to the end so quickly. Hey, hey, my friends. Great to have you. Looking forward to the next video. We'll see you soon. Live long.